Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this very special webinar hosted by the National Federation of Community Broadcasters. I'm Ernesto Aguilar, NFCB's Program Director, and today we are going to be talking about Spinatron, and we are joined by the pros. Tom Worcester and Ava Papp of Spinatron are here to show you the ins and outs of Spinatron, how to utilize its many bells and whistles to help your programming and your station with everything from reporting to automation to music, playlists and much, much more. This is a very interactive webinar. So there is a Q&A chat box that you see down at the bottom of your screen. Please do not hesitate to ask any questions that you've got. I'll be happy to ask them out loud and try to combine those questions in the interest of time and in the interest of levity. And if you need us to go back to anything or repeat anything, please use that Q&A chat box and share those comments privately or to everybody else and let us know. This webinar is being recorded. If you're an NFCB member station, this will be in the Solution Center. If you are not, we're gonna be sharing this publicly through Spinatron's mini channel. So if you're a Spinatron member, you may be seeing this via email at some point or another. However, I wanna pause right now and get right to why you are here and pass it off to Ava and Tom. Thank you so much for being here and please share your questions and let's get into it. Thanks for being here. Thanks Ernesto and thanks for everyone uh, uh, attending the webinar. And uh, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, run about uh, uh, what we planned to talk about and anything beyond uh, uh, we'll be happy to answer anyway. Uh, so first of all, um, uh, I also wanted to congratulate you guys uh, uh, what you did uh, the other day uh, with this uh, singing one or, or playing one song uh, cross border. Uh, that was uh, fantastic and I felt proud of uh, the, uh, this community. So I just wanted to uh, express my appreciation to Ernesto and to all of you who participated. And uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, with uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff's uh, presentation regarding sound exchange reporting, uh, we thought we could uh, answer some questions that uh, he may not have had the time or, or the knowledge of uh, uh, answering. Uh, so we run through very quickly. Uh, I don't want to bore you to death uh, with sound exchange reporting again, but uh, uh, we also want to show you how to do it, how simple it is to do with, with Spinitron. And uh, I also wanted to um, uh, have Tom talk about uh, uh, some automation systems, including um, audio recognition. Uh, that's a relatively new feature for us and uh, um, happy to share uh, ins and outs of, uh, of that. And uh, the rest, uh, and, oh, and, uh, and how to do uh, charting at the station. So those were our, our targeted uh, topics uh, from, from ourselves, but uh, if you have other questions. So clearly you're not gonna have any time for questions left after we run through that stuff. Uh, well, I will try to be uh, quick. <laughs> you're not sharing screen yet, David. I, I understand I have to find my, uh, uh, first of all, so let's uh, share? Uh, share screen. And I want to share one of the newer things we have here is uh, a, a user forum in Spinitron. And uh, I, I just wanted to uh, show you how to find some of the topics. Uh, for example, you can type in sound uh, exchange. And uh, uh, we have a reporting overview and uh, all the links uh, that you need to know uh, is there. Um, you can take uh, the, um, you know, uh, forum.spinitron.com and uh, find any topics. And if it's not there or uh, there is no answer yet, please feel free to chip in or uh, ask a question there. Um, so this is a, a summary of uh, sound exchange reporting licensing. Um, for our purposes here, I would like to distinguish between the public radio and the statutory license uh, uh, CRB um, two different kinds of uh, licenses. Uh, if you are an NFCB member, uh, you can take advantage of the uh, public radio um, 
aspect of it, the C CPB aspect, where you would report directly to uh, NPR. Uh, if you are not an NPR member and not an NFCB member, although I highly encourage to become an NFCB member, uh, you can take uh, um, advantage of the statutory license. Um, I don't want to read it out. You can read it for yourself what the difference is, um, um, both in the um, financial aspect and uh, what you need to do for uh, reporting and how to uh, submit the report. So instead of uh, reading out all those two things uh, that you can find, I thought I would show you how to do the reporting. Uh, once we log into Spinitron. Can yeah. I mention yeah. about the, uh, the forum thing? Um, before, uh, we would like for this to be some, something that you all use. Uh, if you want to, if you've got a support request that you don't mind being public, go ahead and do it on the forum. Uh, and then other people might be able to benefit from the answer. I mean, really, I've I've written the same email reply to you know many times, so that's uh, that that could be very helpful. Yeah. So please, uh, and also DJs can join whoever. Yeah, and if you want to do the uh, um, you know find the nuts and bolts about the uh, statutory license uh, or the public radio license, we have links there, and it. Uh, uh, takes you through the um, more detailed description of what you need to do. So that said, um, I logged into our uh, test database um, and uh, under station settings, uh, if you are an admin, uh, uh, then you can do sound exchange reporting and also other uh, administrative stuff here. Uh, we have a link called sound exchange. And on that form, uh, you can check uh, how you report. Uh, we report uh, to NPR, uh, which is the CPB uh, term, or if you report directly to Sound Exchange, that's a different uh, thing. So let's start with the reporting directly to Sound Exchange because it was already on the screen. Uh, all you need to do here is fill out this form. Uh, it's basically how Sound Exchange identifies you and uh, provide your contact information. Uh, it's nothing more to it. Uh, the only thing is the service category is most likely for uh, stations uh, um, that we uh, have in our repertoire uh, will be D, but you can read more about the service category in the federal registry, if I, if I uh, correctly remember. But uh, once you save changes, um, you don't have to fill it out again. Uh, that would be uh, automatic. If you do report to NPR, um, you don't have to fill out the form. Um, you need to provide, or if you don't know uh, under what uh, database name or stations name you registered with NPR. If I get that, usually it's the stations uh, four letter uh, call letters. Um, if you don't know it, I can get it for M from NPR, so don't worry about it. You don't need to fill out, uh, fill out anything. Just let me know that you don't know it, and we can get it for you. So, and uh, once you decided which one you uh, uh, need to do, you can also do, we don't report, but that's, that's uh, not an option. <laughs> I, would, I would highly encourage uh, reporting. So if you do the uh, sound exchange, uh, to, directly to sound exchange, uh, the next step is when you are ready to uh, submit your report, uh, go under report and click on sound exchange. And all you need to do is enter um, one week ending or two weeks ending. Some stations uh, have to do different reporting too. Uh, uh, census reporting that is, uh, you can choose a three month reporting and enter the ending date uh, for it. Uh, which date uh, uh, did you? I can do today. Uh, today or yesterday, fine. And uh, the ATH number, the aggregate tuning hours number is uh, uh, coming from your stream provider. Uh, there's nothing we can do to help you figure out that number, uh, except explain how to uh, find it. Uh, we, we don't collect it, that's what I mean, but uh, uh, Tom can give you some hints uh, how to guesstimate. Um, enter that number something like this and click preview report and there it is uh, the report is there or, or it's formatted uh, uh, completely according to sound exchange requirement um, you can take a look um, you can 
um, it has a total of 2,247 items and you can take a look at the, on your screen the first uh, 20 rows. Um, you can email it to yourself. Um, hmm? Just do the drop down. Okay, or uh, you can uh, download the file create a file and uh, you can uh, download it uh, to yourself or open in a browser um, and it's going to be a really good bedtime reading. It puts you asleep instantly. So good luck with that. Um, you can go back. Oops, sorry. Back again. Uh, all right. Um, you can also check it uh, as a copy and paste. But anyway, you can email it directly to uh, Sound Exchange if you uh, if you downloaded it, um, then you can upload it into their direct licensing uh, web form, and uh, that's the end of it. No more worries. Uh, you don't have to crunch through the numbers. Uh, it's really according to their uh, specifications. Now, if we go back to um, Sound Exchange here, and let's say we report uh, uh, directly to NPR. Um, I think I have it set up correctly. Uh, go to Sound Exchange again, and uh, it's uh, it looks very similar. Uh, we just give you a little reminder of uh, uh, specifying the start date of your reporting period in uh, Composer, and also that you need to upload uh, your webcast streaming logs. Again, uh, specify which week uh, you need to uh, report on and uh, the end date. And uh, this is, uh, you can ignore you that part, that. you didn't see that, uh, some stations uh, have... You don't uh, need to draw attention to it. Okay, like <laughs> um, so here's the uh, report, and again, you can uh, uh, access this report in a variety of ways. Uh, FTP is the easiest, and that's the reason why it, it's file transporting uh, directly from Spinitron server to uh, NPR's servers. And uh, that's the easiest way. Can I? Th that's the only reason why we need your uh, registration uh, code uh, so the two servers can uh, talk to each other. I wanted to mention that the delivery options of email, download, and copy paste are still there. FTP is different. That's not delivering it to you. you these are ways to get the data yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you can give it to NPR or do whatever you want. I'll just review it, for example. Um, but if you use FTP, that means send it to NPR and it gets delivered to their server and they take it from there. You should be able to see it in Composer within yep. seconds of doing that. Should be, but uh, you should, uh, uh, based on uh, uh, Jeff's uh, um, presentation the other day, you should always check in Composer if it's really there yep. and if, uh, if there is any error message. I can't uh, actually submit it uh, with the FTP because we don't have the uh, and kind of uh, not the same kind of relationship with uh, um, NPR, so that would confuse them a little bit if I... Uh, Trust us, so. it works. Yes, it works, and uh, uh, that's all. You don't, uh, um, you can uh, download it uh, for your uh, own entertainment. Uh, you can create a file and uh, download it uh, uh, if you like, just for your own um, um, record keeping. So that's, uh, that's about uh, wraps up the Sound Exchange uh, reporting. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask perhaps now, or you can think it over and ask later. Uh, happy to answer anytime. We'll let, uh, we'll let um, I can see a picture of Anesta right there. And he's Absolutely. Gonna, he's gonna wave his hands or something if he wants to butt in with a good I, I am always happy to butt in, no problem at all. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about any uh, any Excel uh, and CDS or, or any kind of file. Uh, number oh yeah, what was that, uh, that that app? Oh, it was called Notepad Plus. No, uh, for which you yeah, have yeah. <laughs> so mind. you don't even have to <clears throat> look at it if you don't want to. No, um, we were going to talk about um, automation briefly. If anybody's I, interested, there was a question about that. I think there is. I'm going to, however, um, allow somebody to pop in with a question really quick. I yeah. believe this is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. I can't hear. Uh, may not be coming in. Has been unmuted, but she may be muted right now. So, Kelly, if you can um, add in a, into the chat box, if we can't seem to hear you right now, uh, that would be great. 
Okay, continue. Sorry about that. All right. Great. Um, with yeah, so uh, so for um, I'm going to say that in um, automation, uh, we deal with a great number of automation systems. Well, a great number. Uh, using automation with Spinatron. If you want to go and look at the help topics, these are all now in the forum. Makes it easier for us to keep them up to date. Excuse me, automation. Uh, automation music recognition. Um, and somewhere in here was the topic that lists the software that works with Spinatron. Okay, so here's in here is a topic that's just about what so automation software systems uh, we currently work with. Um, and so you can check to see if your automation systems listed there. Uh, there are some that we know don't work with Spinatron and there's about another 50,000 systems, unbelievably, that, that we've never heard of. Uh, so you'll just have to contact us about that. There's instructions in here, or there's some general topic, general information in here about Spinatron. But if you, if your automation system is supported by Spinatron, then what you'll do is you'll get logged in, which we are, and you'll go to the admin, automation and API, and in here are instructions. So you choose your automation system. Let's say it's no, we don't use support API. That's one anymore. of the one of the yes. Ones that well that's a weird status there let's say we're talking about audio vault right it gives in it gives you instructions there let's say we're talking about um station player is a good example um it gives the specific instructions that are customized for your station so you know so it tells you where to go etc so just whatever your system is i'm not going to go through these because there's too many of them but whatever your um, automation system is, we tell you how to configure it so that it is going to talk to Spinatron every time it starts playing a new song. Um, and then we receive that information uh, from the automation system and process it and usually log it into a playlist. If you want, if you've already got your automation system running, don't forget there's automation logs in Spinatron which tell you what has happened. Uh, this is a bit old, we don't really have to run it, but in here, and there's extra information over here. So don't forget, uh, yeah, if you do use automation and something's not working, you can always check the automation logs and maybe you'll find a clue. Maybe you won't, who knows. Okay, any question about automation? Um, we do have a couple of questions for you. Uh, one is, do I have to add anything to my site to use the FTP upload directly? No, no, you don't. Um, so your uh, it's just a it's it's a feature that's entirely within spinatron so if you want to use we're talking about ftp to uh NPR. npr so the data that you're going to send to npr is all in spinatron so it's in our cloud servers it's in your database in spinatron and then when we use the ftp spinatron produces a report in the appropriate format and transmits it to npr so you don't have to do anything on your site at all. You just need to use Spinatron. Yep. And a clarification, someone asked how often does a station need to report? Every quarter, two weeks in every quarter, that's the standard. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some stations, you would know about it if you were in that category. Uh, some stations need to report uh, uh, census reporting. But uh, still once a quarter. Yes. You should record, you report yeah. the whole quarter, every quarter. Yeah, but uh, most often, uh, more often than not, uh, it's two weeks out of each quarter and you can choose which two weeks uh, you want to report on. If they, they, those two weeks do not have to be uh, adjacent to each other. They can be, for example, for this quarter, started April. You can have one week in April and one week in May. Um, the main thing is that they, they would add up to two weeks. Another question, how does Spinatron handle the handoff from an automation system to a live DJ? Oh, good question. Um, this can be a bit confusing. So there are two cases that, uh, that, that seem to be very normal here. And um, it depends how you operate your station. Some stations have an, have an automation system running 24 seven. It's playing music 24 seven. Uh, on a robot DJ of some kind. 
And when a live, when a human being goes to do a radio show, uh, they turn off the automation system in the mixing board. So they just take the audio down and they start playing CDs and microphones and whatever it is. Um, so that would mean that the automation system is actually playing music at the same time that the DJ is playing music. The automation system continues to send information to Spinatron. Uh, in this case, we have to sort that out. If this isn't the situation at your station, if that's not how you run your automation system, you don't need to worry about this. But in that particular case, you're going to be using the status here in your automation control panel, full automation. What this means is, if there is an open DJ playlist, Spinatron will discard spins that come from automation. All right? Yes, two more questions, and then I want to pass this off to Lee Henriksen, who does have a live question. I am um, done with the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, wait, 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 one second. It's not finished. So I, I'm only done. After oh, sorry about that. Answer. For other stations, they, ha they, they run their automation system on auto DJ, on the robot DJ, only when a, D when a live person isn't there. In that case, you would run the automation, you would set the automation system to the live assist mode. And in this case, every time the automation system plays something, it will be logged into Spinatron. And it's actually going to be inserted into the DJ's playlist if there is one of them. Now I'm done. Does it answer the question? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Good. If you have more, if whoever asked this question, if you have, uh, if you need more assistance, please uh, call me. Uh, we we'll be happy to uh, show it uh, or explain in more details. Um, so, sorry, there is a tiny bit more on that one. The text here on this automation control panel page is intended to answer that exact question that was asked. That's why I say it's such a good question. It's terse because unfortunately the logic is a little complicated, uh, but it works in general quite well without you having to attend to anything. There is a complete detailed explanation of what Spinatron does in these cases in the help topics on, on the forum. So if you really want to understand the details, it's all there. Yeah. Okay. So um, more questions for you. A question about automation and Spinatron's track recognition. How would a station interface between the two? Uh, one station has one DJ that does a lot of concert recordings that don't match. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, concert recordings that don't match are just not going to match. Well, tough. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, live recordings are not going to be matched because the database of fingerprints uh, comes entirely off um, digital commercial music. So commercially available re um, recordings that are distributed by labels and such like. Uh, so live recordings just aren't going to match. You're going to have to type them in. Yeah. It's not a, uh, it's a good system, but it's not bulletproof. Um, there are yeah. holes uh, here and there, uh, but uh, actually recently we encouraged uh, uh, um, one of the person who is working at the ACR cloud uh, to join our um, oh, forum, yeah. well, no, I forum. See what you're and uh, he is um, really nice, uh, uh, replied uh, immediately when someone asked uh, a question. So yeah, Peng is on Peng, Peng is on the, uh, on, Things from ACR yeah. Cloud. Yeah. So you can even, maybe even ask him a contract question. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, I don't want to overburden them with yeah, yeah. Spinatron issues because we're, <laughs> we're whole, we buy their stuff, their service wholesale. And so you're supposed to be dealing with us. Anyway, he's there. Yeah, but he's, he's willing to uh, chip in if, if needed. Um, uh, another question. In the case of services like Classical 24, who sends the report? Every station or the music services? Music, usually um, music services, and that's why you should update uh, your uh, um, schedule on NPR um, Composer, uh, because it will tell you exactly which uh, uh, syndicators submit their playlists. And if they submit their playlist uh, to NPR, you don't have to. So, but, but you need to let NPR know that was the chunk of time when that syndicated show was aired. And uh, so you don't yeah. need to fill out the blanks. So um, that answer only applies to stations that are using, uh, that are reporting through NPR. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, you've got to get the music into Spinatron or yes. some other way. You have to report it to uh, Sound Exchange. Yeah, if you if you report directly to Sound Exchange, then you need to uh, 
uh, find a way to figure out uh, who played that, uh, any, any particular music, even if it's uh, a syndicated show. Okay, uh, two more questions. And then I know we've still got a lot more to go, go through here. Um, one station says we use an automation so, uh, system that isn't supported or is, is there any way to get it supported in the future in some, or some sort of generic way to pipe in information? So I'm going to stop sharing the screen so I can pull faces about Arrakis <laughs> and whatnot. Uh, Arrakis looks unlikely. Um, I, the impression I have is there's not a lot of um, you know, new features coming in that software. Um, so the current status is I don't believe that their software can work with Spinatron. It's just, it's limited. Uh, so the options there are you type things in manually or you use different automation software or you can use recognition mm -hmm. so if you if you want if you're if you want to use the recognition system then you would disconnect your automation system from spinatron uh, if you didn't do that then you'd end up with a whole bunch of double entries the automation system sends it to spinatron um, spinatron locks it in a playlist recognition system recognizes it a few seconds later and logs it into the same playlist. Yes. So that doesn't but, work out so well. But Arrakis, we tried, uh, we spent quite a, quite a long time uh, figuring out, but uh, we, we, uh, uh, I think those are the uh, one out of the two systems that we could make work. Uh, Zara, 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 the, uh, Zara radio didn't work either. It just, yeah. it doesn't handle metadata at all. Yeah. Yeah, some, some automation systems handle metadata better than others, uh, not just in relationship with us, but actually having the metadata and communicating it to any kind of third party. Um, some, some automation systems are better than others. That's it. This, my, this begs the question that maybe we can get into a little bit later. Any automation systems you recommend for folks? But I'm going to drop these last two questions to you all because I know you have more material to get through. Um, so uh, what is the usual process for fixing an error? If a DJ inputs a song at the wrong start time, how do you fix it? And how uh, will you know what the correct time was? I don't know if that last question is something you all can answer. but um, How will you know what the, when it was? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the, that's for up to the DJ to get that right. Um, so if the timestamp, well, first of all, um, what is the timestamp? Um, the, why, do, why is that so important? The only reason that we understand that to be important uh, or especially important is um, for NPR reporting. Sound exchange and the pros don't care about timestamps. Uh, they only need to know how often a recording or a composition was played on the radio. Uh, during their uh, sample period. Uh, NPR, on the other hand, uh, has this requirement and they want it to the second. Um, so how do you get that right? Uh, you're going to have to get your DJs to get it right if it's, if, it's, if it's manual data entry. If you want to correct it, I can show you how that's done. Uh, we go into, uh, I need to share screen again, right? There we go. Share screen. And I choose this one. And click share. Are we back up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sounds good. Right. So I go into here. So I browse playlists, right? Playlist menu, browse. And I find the playlist that's got the, the error in it. And I use the pencil icon. Uh, that's to edit the playlist. The first page is for editing the, uh, the information about the playlist. Click submit there because I'm not interested in editing that. And then in here, well, check this out. This particular playlist is all in the future, so it doesn't have those. That's why I should have chosen a different example, uh, something that's not in the future. So let's say Thursday this week, I'll choose this one, edit, click through, submit here. Now with a bit of luck, we got real timestamps. So if you want to modify any of these timestamps, just click there and change it. Okay. And last quote. What do you change it to? I have no idea. That's your job. Yeah. I mean, uh, besides of uh, uh, making it precise for NPR, uh, it is useful for listeners and uh, displaying on your website uh, the now playing. Uh, so the, it has some, some it has more merit than yeah, yeah. just uh, uh, for the sound exchange reporting. Yeah. When for in the olden days, um, we didn't even display se seconds here, um, but that seems to have become required. But if you're in the options in here, you can actually turn that off. Yeah. Right, you can. So anybody uh, not familiar with this uh, option, go back once. 
right, I can just go and submit and go back here. Yeah. So if you want to, um, regarding the automation, uh, the audio recognition, uh, we have these uh, icons here, um, and uh, it's not easy to see them, maybe, but uh, this is uh, where you can uh, um, change the um, settings for your playlist if you want to. Um, uh, these are really personal preferences. Yeah, yeah. These persist. These are um, DJ preferences. They persist, um, you know, from one session to the next. Yeah. And if the audio recognition is enabled for the station, uh, that's where you would see, um, since we don't use uh, like the test uh, for audio recognition, uh, it's not enabled, but that's where you would see uh, where you can suspend it um, if you need to or if you want to for that particular show. Right. So uh, it's, it's a useful idea. So if, if the DJ is finding that, auto, that the recognition is no use to them, they can disable it for their playlists. Yeah, or if you are playing mostly talk show that has some That's music, uh, music uh, That's bands. That's an example uh, of where it's not useful. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, last question for this segment, and then I know you've got other material to go through. Um, how does a syndicated show work with Spinatron's matching system? Uh, it's going to be recognized. Um, so if you are, um, uh, I don't know, undercurrents, right? Undercurrents is a, is a popular one. Um, and they're nice guys, so we don't mind yeah. mentioning the name, undercurrents. Yeah. Um, they... Uh, if you have the recognition turned on, uh, then those spins are going to be recognized, you know, to the extent that the recognition is, is accurate and, and manages to do it. It's likely to because they're playing commercial music. Um, then uh, it's going to be recognized. And in that case, there's a good question to be asked about what you do with NPR, um, uh, NPR reporting. Let me first say, you kind of want it to be recognized because it's nice for listeners. Spinatron is not just about record keeping and reporting. It's also web publishing. You've got it, everybody has a, you know, unless you disable it, everybody's got their um, public site in Spinatron, right? And you can integrate this into your own website, and you should, and, uh, and your listeners are going to be able to see what was played on the radio. Um, you know, they're going to be able to share things on Spotify and play games like that. Uh, even listen to a 30 second sample if you press that triangle there. So things like, yeah, so you want that music on your website, assuming you're publishing. So if that's the case, I would think that you don't, you want to not include those shows for syndication. That's something we really ought to check with NPR though. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you... Um if you report on those shows, um, then you don't have to uh, match it against their data, uh, NPR's uh, already submitted uh, playlist. You just submit your data and that's the end of it. Uh, you don't have to uh, worry about which show it was and uh, update your schedule. If you report everything uh, during those two weeks, um, then, then you are all set. Sure main so. thing, yeah, yeah. Main thing is that they have the data. One way or another, uh, is just uh, uh, making your life easier if you don't have any other ways to get the syndicated shows metadata. Yeah, I don't know if NPR can sort of like deduplicate things. That might be nice as well. But um, otherwise, uh, I guess they. Could, we should ask that question from NPR. Okay. Shall we find something else to talk about? We had kind of thought that this might be an ask us anything sort of yeah. um, presentation. We're ready to demonstrate yeah. whatever you're interested in. Did you have some more material you wanted to go through? I, 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 wanted, yeah. I have a clarifying question. So if I've got a talk show, um, the Ernesto talk show uses a five second segment or 10 second segment of a copyrighted song, I insert it into my podcast or my radio show, uh, output a new MP3, and then play it on the air. That will be recorded by Spinatron system as well, or reported? If it's long enough, yes. Uh, I think it, it require, you know, yes. So even relatively short segments that you've, uh, of music that you've chopped up and used in, let's say, a promo or whatever, or a little bit of bad music, that's going to be recognized. Um, and it's going to go into a playlist. 
So if you, if that's something that stations have, uh, who, when they first turn on recognition, it's a, um, something they have to get used to, um, is that everything is going to get recognized if it's known music. So you've got to decide what you want to do about that. You can get DJs to go and delete them, uh, or you could just leave them there. That's really your options. Yeah, Another question. Pretty easy. Uh, Deleting is very easy, yeah. uh, of course. But the uh, but on the other hand, if you're using that music strictly speaking for at least for sound exchange reporting, it's supposed to be reported because it was performed, right? Even if you only play one second, one second. Oh, sorry, you can't see my finger because we're straight sharing the screen. But if you know if you play one second, the um, the copyright owner of that recording is supposed to get the royalty. Station asks, can we default to have default text during talk, talk programming? Example, big picture science, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, where is this default supposed to display? Good. I would expect maybe on the playlist, but if um, uh, at so Spinatron. Talking, the, let's, the, say, let's say we're talking about the, uh, the public display. Right, pub, your public page on, 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 on Spinatron, right? So let's go and take a look at one. Uh, if there's no playlist, if you don't have a playlist that's ongoing at the moment, like the last spin that was put into a playlist was about 10, 15 minutes ago, I can't remember exactly, then we won't display a current playlist here. We'll display what's scheduled to be on the air according to your uh, program schedule that's kept in Spinatron. Um, so that's, uh, that will be replaced there, uh, assuming that was the question. Um, Another question, someone asking whether you can schedule times for the uh, recognition system to be on or off. Yes, you yes, can. Yes, you can. Uh, uh, you can do it uh, in the schedule. Um, I can just properly um for example um you can edit that show is that too fast and uh, um you can disable automation for any particular show as a default and so this should probably say automation slash recognition right there mm -hmm. because in spinatron their handle is pretty much the same uh there are differences but they're fairly small yeah um just to repeat how that works in the schedule you can disable on the basis of a scheduled show, right? So, conspiracy theory and practice show, that's actually not mine. So edit, and it's in here. Now it's going to be disabled for every upcoming instance of that radio show, okay? okay. So every time that that's scheduled, yeah. Monday, in this case, 1 a.m., yeah. this is the right time of day. The other thing that we did just mentioned was in the playlist preferences, uh, if we, that's a good point. I should have said it on the There we go. In the playlist preferences, which is the cog icon in the top right on, on any playlist uh, worksheet, uh, in there, if you've got recognition running, DJs can disable it. So that's not based on the schedule, that's based on DJ preferences. And that preference to disable recognition will apply whenever that DJ has a playlist that has begun, but hasn't ended. And you see this uh, over here, we've got this particular playlist was, it's got a date and a time, start time and an end time. So if that, so if, if that DJ had that, uh, that checkbox checked for, the dura for that duration on that day, um, then recognition would have been disabled. It's another control, but uh, that wasn't actually a question. Sorry. So yes, the, the answer is yes, you can disable it uh, per show basis in the schedule or per playlist uh, basis uh, individually uh, during, play, uh, during a show. Are there any features that you're working on that you could mention to folks? Not with an expectation you haven't done anytime soon, but any features that you even... Yeah, we've got a couple about? of couple coming up I'm trying to try and remember what they were I would uh, I would not 
want to share a screen to show you exactly what's in the pipeline, but uh, I guess I could do that in another browser. Oh, you know what? We could go back to uh, not sharing a screen. I could tell. Anyway, one of them is. Um, uh, one of them is being non music. No, okay. Sorry. No. Uh, one of them is um, share a playlist to uh, Spotify. So what this does is uh, anyone on the public can take a, a there's going to be another button here. Um, and if you click on that button, uh, then a playlist is going to be generated in Spotify, in Spinatron's Spotify account, and you're free to share it. So, uh, so if you're a spin, if you're a Spotify user, if you're currently logged in, you can go and share that, or you can just get a get a URL for it um, and share that. So there's that. Um, there's a couple of other fun ones coming up. Um, One of the things that uh, I wanted to really show here. Um, one second. Sorry. I don't know if you were. Um, familiar with this uh, is the you can actually in the description in the uh, under the admin here in the um, station settings and or show description. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Mm. I didn't. No, that was uh, sorry, sorry. Um, where where do you put this in the show description or the uh, station? station? Yeah, has to do with station. So um, yeah, so uh, station description in the admin station identity. Uh, you can actually put your uh, stream link uh, there, and uh, it would show up. It's I don't know. Put a player. Uh, so you it, can listen. To yeah, it. you can listen to it uh, and and. Spinatron, if if you if you want to. Oh yeah, it's it, it it uses your uh, stream URL, so it uh, will be counted as as your stream. It's just one more ways of uh, of uh, accessing your station for here's, uh, here's listeners. Here's a feature, uh, um, a new feature. It's not it's not it's not c coming, but you might not know about it. Uh, worth mentioning here. Wrong window. There we go. So in admin in the web customization. It's now possible to add not just custom style sheet in here, but also a custom layout. Now, this is this does some amazing tricks. It's a, it takes a little while to get your head around it, but it's actually very simple to use once you've got once you've figured it out. In other words, you can replace the page layout. If you know HTML stuff, that might be clear. That you replace the one that Spinatron is using. Our this is fairly kind of vanilla sort of white label looking thing. But you can replace that with your own website's page layout so that you can sort of make Spinatron look just like your, um, your, your own website. And in that page layout, you can do navigation stuff to get to and from. So we've actually got a test, where it tests, uh, test. Would you remember what it is? W-O-H-M. Oh, we can do a W-O-H-M. Yeah, they've done it as well. Uh, own radio, there we go. Uh, they were the uh, they were first station to actually deploy this. So in Ohm Radio, we've got. Can you all see that? I'm still scaring, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We've got. Uh, they've got. This is their website, right? Okay, mm -hmm. nice picture. Um, and all their regular stuff in the you know in, in, in navigation. But if you click on the schedule, you end up at Spinatron. It's a sort of masked a little bit because we provided a, uh, a special URL for it. And now we're looking at a Spinatron page that's got Ohm Radio's branding. Um, yeah, page layout, mm -hmm. right? So it's got their branding, of course, but it's got more importantly, it's got the navigation, the same navigation wow. elements as before. So you can go back to Ohm Radio just by clicking there. Kaboom, right? So let's do that one more time and I'll show you even more of the power of. Um, the power of custom layout programming. Right? So we can go and have a look at a radio show. Now there was one in particular that I wanted to, yeah, local and live with Jenna Freely. So we're going to look at this. This is a, a, a playlist um, that's not loading for whatever reason. Um, maybe My poor, poor playlist. computer is a, is a little bit overwhelmed. I can, I can hear the fan. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So in in here, um, this is we're still on a, on a Spinatron page uh, that we you can tell the difference because it says schedule dot whatever, and in here I can actually view uh, also the what what is wrong with your computer? It's supposed to be more than that in there, and in he, in this space. Uh, you can even put a uh, your show description. That's what your show description will show in there. And you can put, for example, if you a mix cloud um, player. So if you that I, I think they do that at home radio. So for example, if you've got a show that you recorded and then you uploaded the recording of that into mix cloud, then you can generate a little embed and copy paste that into the show description. And um, you know, hey presto, whatever is the right. Abracadabra, um, you'll, you'll be, your listeners will be able to come and play it, uh, play it right there. Um, and you can have the, you can set it, set things up with the style sheet so that these are always open if you choose. Yeah, you could try to put it into Safari because sometimes. Uh, uh, I don't think you want to open another browser right now, <laughs> not with that computer overheating. Sorry. No. Uh, you can't hear too, too much if it's any consolation. Good, good. But uh, you can you can uh, um, check out uh, W O H you know on radios uh, uh, website. Uh, maybe you will have uh, more luck in your uh, computer and browser than I have. Yeah. So the important point here is that we can um, navigate uh, among all of Spinatron's pages and get all the features, including listening to bits of music, whatnot, right? Yeah. Except I, I will load it Ava's computer again. Um, good thing. And I can navigate back again. And then I'm then you're no longer on spinatron.com. Um, it's the this is um, a this well with whether you used widgets or whether you used iframes, there were navigation problems. You would always end up not being able to navigate seamlessly between pages of Spinatron content and your own website's pages. This new feature, which I'll remind you again is in here, uh, is, uh, is another approach altogether, which we introduced uh, in recent months. And, uh, so the, and the other point to mention, um, it's documented in the forum. So just go and, look, go and do the search for a forum. Yeah, integration. Something like that, or, or yeah. custom layout. Yeah. And you'll find, find the documentation there. But obviously, you're going to end up talking to me because this stuff is confusing. Yeah. A question about uh, linking or integrating with Radio Free America. Is there any recommendations you might have? Uh, yeah, so um, we also have this in uh, uh, enabled here. Uh, if you if you are not using Radio Free America yet, um, I strongly suggest you try it. It's free. It's good. It's working. Should and we say what it is? Oh, it's a it's an archive archiving yeah. uh, so it, system. Um, they have they have a system where uh, they can connect to your stream and record it and provide a, a legit two week um, archive that your listeners can go and listen to. Um, so it's pretty much standalone apart from this one button right there. Yeah. Um, and what that accomplishes is it sends you off to Radio Free America so that they can connect back to us and suck data out such as, I think, DJ profiles and schedule, things like that. Yeah, so if you, if you click it, uh, it, takes, uh, it takes you to their website, but they can follow, uh, they can see it in uh, um, Radio Free America, and they can, yeah, uh, from that on, they will know what to do <laughs> uh, in theory. Yeah, I've never actually used Radio Free America as a station, so I can't tell you all that much about it. Or yeah. support you. But if you have any troubles, uh, technical or or otherwise, with them, uh, Jeff Abrams is uh, is a very responsive guy, and uh, as a former um, station manager of Radio Boise, he will uh, be more than happy to help you. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Question. Another question from a station that says, uh, they use the recognition software and the classical music host finds many songs and albums posted uh, that don't match what was played and asks if that's a bad thing when they send in reports. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, the, 
I mean, you've probably noticed that in general, classical music is extremely badly supported by nearly all software. Um, and the, uh, the problem even extends to the systems of music metadata that are used in the digital music supply chain. So, for example, a, a streaming service like Tidal doesn't even understand composer names. So you try and search by composer, it just doesn't work. Um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, the, what's important to uh, report and not report is for you and your lawyer to go and talk about. But obviously, we would suggest that you report as much as you can, because then uh, rights holders are going to get what's rightfully due to them, right? And sometimes those are even the musicians um, yeah. who could do with a bit of support, right? Yeah. Um, even uh, not, not only classical music, but uh, uh, with other music, it's possible that uh, the recognition will find the artist and the song title correctly. But because of that song uh, it's been recorded on 1500 different uh, releases, uh, it, the, still the, the fingerprinting and the, the structure of the music is identical. It's the same thing. It's yeah. the same thing. So uh, the fingerprinting uh, will not be able to distinguish. So it's, it will pick the most obvious. Uh, um, well, it picks one. Picks one. I, and and if, we don't know how. If you uh, don't mind it, you can just leave it. Um, if you do mind it, you can correct it. But uh, uh, if the artist and the song is correct, that's probably the most important as far as uh, your listeners are concerned. Uh, and when it comes to sound exchange reporting, so at when, least you reported something. If you're using recognition and there's a DJ that cares to get release titles and label names correct, then you can just edit those the same as you would edit any other spin in your playlist. Yeah. Shall we go to charting? Yeah, uh, search and any, any other questions destroy. About uh, of and course, there's always questions. Uh, typical latency of the automated lookup? Pretty quick, actually. Um, I, there aren't, I don't use it, so probably there are others that can type in an answer into the, into the question box. But um, the, uh, it should be within, between about 10 and 20 seconds, and oftentimes it's closer to 10. Uh, or on, we, even under 10, I see it. I, I saw that. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. On to charting. And, and, before, and as you're lo loading up charting, I want to remind folks, we are getting close to the top of the hour. So you've, if you've been withholding that question, this is your chance. So begin to think about that as we begin to explore charting. Um, Eva and I don't have to rush off. Okay. If you want to. Uh, so charting is, uh, uh, because it comes up uh, quite often, how to do search and chart. It's under report. Um, click on search and chart. Um, am I still sh sharing? Yes, yep. good. So uh, by default, it brings up the search for spins, as in spin statistics, uh, in the last week. Uh, you can change uh, to months or days, and you can uh, add your own date, and you can uh, filter it by um, whatever uh, fields uh, you enabled in the uh, admin section. Uh, most common, as far as I know, is the release chart, you know, album chart in other ways. Um, so if you want to do the uh, last week, uh, it will... Let us first take a look at this result. Yeah, this result. Right. So let's just uh, point out a couple of things here. So what we've done here is taken all the spins for this interval of time, and we grouped them according to the artist name and the release title. So this allows you to see uh, when, when things have been grouped and there was uh, a difference in one of the data entry things. So for example, in this one, we can see, in this particular release, we can immediately see uh, for the whole world to see by death, uh, it's on two different albums, sorry, two different labels. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's no big deal right there. There is in fact a way to correct this right from here. Uh, but we can get on with um, with the chart first. So here's another example down here. Uh, this particular album release uh, by Fugazi is presumably it's been re-released. This is yeah. another of those things that recognition is very likely to um, 
to not choose the best one. You know, there, um, there's just no way to know which release got played and, and recognition just chooses one of them. So uh, things like that can come up. So we got another, what we got here. Uh, those are different, uh, those are different albums, those, yeah. right? Those are different albums. Mm -hmm. um, and you can paste through these. Yeah. And then we're gonna go and click the chart. Mm -hmm. So clicking the chart simply takes this and then uh, adds them together to count, well, how often do they get played? Now, here's a funny one. I'm, I'm afraid you're just gonna have to see this. We're working on this. It's a bug in ACR Cloud's recognition. Uh, have you all noticed, those of you that are using recognition, uh, uh, Patrick, um, Patrick Mystery's um, uh, song, I can't remember the song, um, actually we can pop it open I think and see which one that was. Uh, it's always the same, Lion, that's it, right? Uh, it, this, this is something that seems to get recognized when there's something close to dead air going on. Um, so there's a there's a dodgy fingerprint in there. It's just being recognized as wrong. But ten reported that uh, uh, it's been fixed. Yeah, and I reported it probably has. And yeah. Um, so what we see here is the number of spins it, during this one week ending today. What's the twelfth today? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the number of spins and where then we've got ranking is just that's the row number in the, in the chart here. Um, now the what do you do about um, about stuff that you think should be, uh, is incorrect? So when you're running a chart, if you want to actually produce a chart, let's say to put on your station's blog or whatever it is, uh, then you need to be careful to count things together that should be counted together. And you might find that the same thing uh, is entered under two different artist names or two different release titles. And in this case, uh, if that if, if that has happened, then you would want to actually combine them. And we have tricks for, for, for dealing with that when you're an admin. So if you're an editor or an admin user, then you get some extra powers to actually edit people's playlists directly from this uh, this tool. But I'm going to do it prefer I'm going to start by doing it in in, um, in a spin chart. So I'm just going to start over here. No, no, skip. Skip me. Sorry. I'm going to go to to start over here um, and demonstrate that, first of all, if I hold down on my uh, Mac keyboard, the Option key, and on your Windows keyboard, the Alt key, and then click, then I can edit within the search feature. Now, an ordinary DJ can't do this, but an admin can, and a, an editor user can. So this is something that you can do to go and clean up data uh, that others, uh, that, you know, somebody's entered something yeah, wrong yeah. or they've just entered something a little different. Yeah, but be careful because you are, uh, with this page, uh, that method, you are editing directly in the playlist. Yeah, you're not editing a report. You're, you're editing the source material for the report. Yeah, if you right. do that. So we're doing that. So that's one way to, to change things. The other way to change things that's, uh, that's kind of clever is let's say we're looking at the fall. Type in that in here, and um, let's say we're going to sort by release. And so far, this is looking reasonably good. But you know what? I'm going to say that this and this. I'm going to select. You see what I'm doing? I'm selecting with a checkbox certain rows. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a way of copying uh, a value in a column from one row to another. In fact, to more than one. So I, those are all rock, and I want them to all have the genre rock. So I've selected the three that I want to change, and then I click on the value that I want them all to have. And it's asking me to confirm. Yep. So those are all. Rock. And as if by magic, those all got changed all in one go. If I was to do something particularly weird, let's say uh, we choose a, a song. I don't know what's um, uh, uh, priest, right? Oh, come on, big priest or whatever. What's what's a come on? Name me the most popular um, the fall song. Ah, oh, goodness. Well, there's actually not that many here. So if we if we sort by song, we'll see. 
inspector versus rec these all these all came from recognition so it's pretty consistent but let's say somebody's entered um or, answer uh, because it's not the real one so we can just uh, well I, I yes i wanted to uh, i wanted to if possible give a um less confusing example well let's say i decided right these these songs are all actually from the same album, right? So what I can do is check those rows and click on the one that they should be from. And I've decided it's, it's this one, this is the B side, right? Those are all, those songs are all in fact from the release of the B sides. I can change seven items. Yeah, that looks correct. So it's asking me to confirm, right? I've now changed seven spins in perhaps seven playlists no probably not seven different playlists but uh, so i just went and updated those those playlists themselves and, and changed the data in them so that now has an effect on the chart see see why i'm doing this and we'll look at the fall um how did that happen well, i guess that's just an awful lot of the fall really. yeah right? and you're doing the spin um the release i wanted to do a release chart and then press chart over here. Mm -hmm. And with a bit of jolly luck, we're going to be able to scroll down to there. They would have been combined into there. Mm -hmm. And because I was doing something really weird, I uh, ended up with all these different um, label names. Right? I can go back and sort that out. And if you're a real power user, then you can open, and you've got a widescreen, then you should open two, win two uh, browser windows, one with the spins, and another one with your album chart. And you can sort of like modify the playlists in one of them, and then rerun your chart in the other one. And you can work through, uh, work through it to create your, your album chart that way. Okay. If you're producing a spins chart, it's very similar, just yeah. search for spins. So this is this is all about the uh, the chart uh, that is to know. You can experiment with it. You can click left and right, up and down, and uh, um, you can you know make a little mess and you can correct it too. Uh, and by the way, I also wanted to show you something. And uh, this is uh, how you do um, reports for BMI and ASCAP. Right. Uh, go to the uh, search and chart. Um, get your uh, you know three days. Of, uh, you know, BMI usually asks for three days if I uh, understand this right. Uh, do the search and uh, basically um, export email, uh, check which uh, um, fields you want to include. Uh, for, for BMI, you need to include the artist, uh, the song name, um, the, uh, you know, the release and the label they you can include. Composer. Uh, they want a composer, so uh, but if you don't have the composer, you still need to submit the uh, report to them, and this is how you do it. And you can display it, you can download it, um, whichever format that, that, that they want it in. Um, uh, the BMI, the the pro themselves will give you the instructions on what they want. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is the you would use the um, the search and chart feature. Yeah. to get it yeah and if you want to use uh, your chart or or the search results for anything else uh we have a variety of uh, um delivery method and uh, format uh, that you can choose from if you want to post it on your blog site or um some other uh, submitting to uh, agencies um we can accommodate that uh, just choose the, choose the uh, appropriate format and delivery i actually wanted to point out um, there's a trick here when you're doing the, um, you can do an awful lot of surprising, uh, surprisingly good amount of um, copy paste with TSV, tab separated values. For example, if you, if you display that, then I've just got a text box. That looks terrible, right? But if I do control A in there, so select all inside that text area, I can copy, I can paste that into uh, Excel or Google Docs or whatever it is, and it just pays perfectly. So you can do some nice tricks as well. One suggestion for forums on BMI and ASCAP reporting. And then yeah. also yeah, a question. Are, yeah. 
there are questions. Uh, we, we have uh, basically screenshots uh, uh, we presented that uh, on the... Um, Yeah, so we have uh, either this one or the or the other one. Yeah, we have uh, screenshots here. Uh, you can try to follow that. Just with, just what we now. Here. You can help us out here if uh, we don't spinach on. We don't actually do any of this kind of reporting, so we kind of really rely on you guys to make any corrections to this. Uh, if there are ways to improve these instructions go ahead and add a comment down here and just you know reply uh, and uh, you know we'll, we'll try and figure out what what the best improvement would be so question are there charting tools or methods for creating something like a top 10 spins on a station between specified dates yeah absolutely um, so back to wherever it was we were so we're going to start over here from search and chart, right? Yep. So between certain dates. So we, you enter those dates as an ending date. Oh, don't, I don't need. I don't want to go too far here because we've got a limited amount of test data. So let's say it's going to be uh, boom, boom, three days ending January. So first, second, and third of June. All right. Search, and there's all the spins. That was that. So if you want to export that now, you get to choose which fields you well, export. Well, were you asking about charting for uh, those uh, three days or certain intervals or? Um... Yeah, if we want to chart them, that's, that's it. I think the, the question seems to refer to a specific, you know, how do I specify a, a date range? Yeah, right? yeah. But yes, you can do it historically. You can, you can run a chart on um, you know, uh, 2005 yeah, you the can whole do, world, you if can, you want. You can do months, months and, then, and then enter, enter 53 months. Uh, and I'd rather ask you don't do that very frequently. Yes, but in theory you can. I mean, if, if everybody started doing a 500 months uh, uh, I'm not sure what, time, what effect, they, that, the effect uh, would be on the servers, but um, we can, they, they, we can hope for the best. You know. we, we would notice. Does it answer the question? I believe it does. I believe it does, and we, it looks like we are wrapped up with questions. That's it? Wow. Any more questions about uh, audio recognition? Because that's a question. Questions about anything. Yeah. There's so much to play with in spinach. Everybody knows how to create users, and uh, uh, one more thing I want to uh, point out that uh, the station settings, please make sure uh, that uh, you go through the uh, the appropriate uh, playlist fields. Uh, don't leave it if you if you are not using the some uh, the custom fields. Um, don't enable them because it looks uh, uh, strange for DJs. Yeah. Uh, make sure you it looks tidy for um, DJs and easy. Um, that, that's actually why we put this mock up here is so that if you're not using stuff, you can see what the form looks like when you disable it. Yeah, right. it's just. If you don't need the if you don't need the field, then don't put it there because that makes life easier for DJs. I did want to show something else, another nice new feature uh, in certain chart. We were just there, right? Mm -hmm. I go to export an email, and you see that? You oh. see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? I take the playlist nice. title because I'm not interested in this. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Take the DJ name out. So it, it gives you a bit more of a live preview of what you're looking at. That's actually quite useful in some situations. Yeah, because it gives yeah, gives more information. Um got after I said there were no questions, I've of course got three more. Um, so uh, RD, uh, RDS push exports out there using the auto recognition question mark. I'm not exactly sure what the question refers to, but can you, can you read that again? Uh, RDS push exports out there using the auto recognition. Yes. So I believe I understand what the question relates to. So in recognition, yes, you will get the songs go into, into playlists and uh, generally speaking in a nice timely fashion, which means that you can push them out to your RDS encoder. So uh, HD radio, um, there's a thing in there for that. It's not named the same. Uh, but this is all under the metadata push feature. 
Uh, so if you've got Metadata Push turned on and you can go and set up another channel here for your uh, RDS encoder. And so this is a little involved setting it all up, but we're here to help you with that. There's also good documentation for it. Um, that link we should update because this is now on the form and we're going to be getting rid of that. But so that's a, I just demonstrated a, a bug. Um, that there's, inf there's, uh, there's documentation on how to do that. So if you've already got your stuff working with, sorry, if you've already got your Spinatron working with your RDS successfully, then if you were to use uh, recognition, yes, certainly that uh, th those recognition spins will go to the RDS too. Uh, and vice versa, if you're already using recognition, but you don't have a Spinatron connected to your RDS, or you don't even have an RDS encoder that does this kind of feature yet, you can go and buy one, set it up, and when we set it up in Spinatron, everything's going to be fine and dandy. Can you aggregate across multiple stations to create a top 10 between those stations? Absolutely. I can. I can. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I, I have been doing. Ah, oh, God. Sorry. So, um, I... to answer, Ava. Sorry. The, 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 the Spinatron chart exists, yes, and you can go and look at that, right? Yeah chart okay and this is the bane of Ava's life because it involves all that deduplication and tidying up of data uh, for um, you know I, 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 do we have the data here um, for, yeah, no it doesn't matter hundreds of thousands of spins yeah um, and it's pretty tough but more important if you want to produce a chart then you can do that too and you do that by signing up for advanced search so we just rolled out this uh, advanced search uh, about four weeks ago, three weeks ago uh, for a uh, music industry. Uh, that also helps uh, keeping our fees uh, steadily flow towards stations because that way uh, bigger promoters can easily afford that much uh, uh, for tracking and uh, they can subsidize us uh, um, with our uh, development Subsidy. effort. Did you know Spinatron hasn't put its prices up in more no, than 15 and, years? And, and if stations struggle, especially these times, I just sent out invoices. I felt uh, terrible sending invoices, but here we are. We need to pay our bills too. And uh, I encourage everyone uh, to get in touch with me if, uh, uh, if you have any financial uh, problems. Um, it will be accommodating and, uh, you know, I don't want to put that any special burden on any station. Yes. But so, uh, so the advanced search is, is helping a little bit offset our, uh, our low fees uh, towards uh, station. So what, they, so can, they can put a, a really nice chart uh, together for themselves uh, because I've been struggling doing a really good uh, uh, chart um, here. It takes me about six hours uh, to produce a top 50 uh, chart. Uh, we have about uh, uh, 300,000 spins uh, each week and uh, uh, quite a lot of um, sloppy entry. Uh, since we, uh, more and more stations are using audio recognition, it certainly made uh, a difference in my uh, compiling the report and I will start it up again. I stopped doing the charts because a um, the, um, lot of stations went on hiatus, um, so I did too. <laughs> Uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so all those uh, uh, automation systems left alone generating, uh, you know, the same 40 songs uh, over and over again, uh, it seemed a little pointless to include, uh, to include uh, Justin Bieber and, and the rest uh, uh, in our charts. It's not really what Spinitron chart is about. So I waited it out and I think in July, uh, I will start up again uh, the aggregator um, charting. If that answers the question, if if anybody knows any interns uh, to to uh, help me out with the uh, charting, I uh, will be happy to take on any interns. I know some of you work in uh, colleges where students are uh, looking for um, entertainment and options to work. No, this is a, this is actually a, a, a serious thing. Because if, uh, I will be happy to offer. Uh, yeah, I'll pay properly. Um, and the, uh, but it's also a tremendous uh, insight into uh, music data. Yeah. Right. So if you're, if the student is somebody who's looking for, might be interested in a career uh, with something to do with music, you're going to see stuff. I learned a lot about uh, uh, 
you know current releases and artist names and uh, who's doing what and so that uh, that's an interesting uh, place to be yeah. send but, us your intents yes send Ava your intents <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there, there, there is the aggregate thing uh, uh, but stations uh, internally uh, are not able to compile the aggregate unless uh, you're yeah. using the advanced search that's digital advanced search so question, where does Spinatron get the album art and can a station customize the art used by our station? I don't know exactly how, what that means. Uh, but... Yeah. Sorry, Sorry that's Lucy. Lucy. Um, Go, hi, she... Lucy. What? Go what? She'll quiet down. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so the album art comes from uh, an, a few different um, sources that we, where we use Kind of like a, we can use some API searches from external stuff. We've also got a, a commercial database that we use. Uh, I don't want to get into the details there, uh, but the um, you can during yes you can during a playlist while while playlist is live you can check the checkbox is the uh, album art correct. Um, so you can basically either you can either use it or not but we don't have a way for each spin for you to enter uh, album art URLs. If that's something you need, uh, we can consider it, but it's certainly gonna clutter up the uh, playlist entry form. Yeah, the audio recognition automatically inserts uh, um, yep. cup, uh, album art. Yeah. And uh, you know, that that's also, it came up recently on our uh, front page. Uh, we only, that that front page doesn't belong sure to that. any uh, doesn't matter i just wanted to see it uh, um, it doesn't really belong to any station it's a it's a, it's a spinitron front page it's a landing page it's a gimmick uh having a nice uh, um moving target on the top as a as a map and uh, we only include uh, uh spins that have cover art that's the pretty much the only criteria um, because it just uh, makes it uh, a little bit more colorful. Yeah. So it's it, if you if you don't find your station there, um, don't mm. be upset with us, please. It's it might it's, be because you just haven't got cover. Exactly. Um, if you run from automation, it usually doesn't uh, include. It doesn't have a way of communicating. Yeah, uh, and the reason and the reason for that is uh, so a lot of cover art comes from autocomplete or the did you mean search, um, and in those cases the uh, those are interactive, right? So it's up to the DJ to confirm if, uh, if an autocomplete suggestion or if a did you mean search result is correct. Uh, so the DJ is always in control. If it's automation, we just log what we get from your automation system. It's not, we don't elaborate from that. Um, so you won't, get, uh, you won't get cover art from that unless your automation system sends us a URL for some cover art. Um, in, yeah. One bit of feedback, kudos from one of the attendees that said you all should make more videos. And uh, final yeah, question. I'd love to make some more videos. You can send me another intern <laughs> to help with that. Yeah. They're really time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I would like to make some more. It's, uh, and I've got some specific things I, I, I do want to make. Oh, I, there was another feature that's coming up that I just remembered and forgot. Oh, damn. There's another feature that we've implemented. Oh, yeah, on this thing. Yes, right here. So we're still sharing screen. You see in here that you can, these dots, if you didn't know, you can click on them, right? So you can play with this map. It actually zooms. Did you know that? Right. So this is, this is kind of show off stuff that we can show people to people on conferences. You know, it's just kind of a gimmick. It's fun. Uh, but we're going to add here a little audio player so you can connect to the station's stream from right here in the map. Um, so it's, I don't know if you uh, if you all have seen that Google Earth app that's really cool. It's got it's a- the, uh, the sound garden. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So you, on a, you, can, you can kind of look at a picture of Earth and then spin around, you wanna show? Mm -hmm. And then listen to Soind Garden. I'm sorry, I can't type to save my life. I know. Mm. Um, sound mm. exchange, that's fun. Uh, sound garden, whatever. Anyway, so it's gonna it's gonna be a little, a little bit like a really cheap version of, of this. You're gonna go to the official website of Sound Garden. Why? I just wanted to show how it works. I don't think you know what you're looking at. Sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's not the right. Just go back button. Come on. All right. Doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, I I think it was a little unlikely you're going to find it. While you're looking, I'm going to ask a question. I think I'm going to answer it too. Uh, can you download a song from Spinatron? I think the answer to that is no. No. I, I think think so. Spinatron, Spinatron doesn't um, uh, doesn't actually have any audio data in its database at all. Uh, our database is entirely to do with what's called the metadata. That is, you know, artist name, uh, song title, release title, those things. Um, and the what you can hear. Uh, when you play one of these, um, you know, you go to a playlist and that stuff. We're playing that from one of, gosh, that's fun, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so we're playing that off the, off the net after doing a search with something like, I can't remember, iTunes music or something yeah. like that. Um, mm. uh, so those are all, all coming from somewhere else, not from Spectrum. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is coming from, from the iTunes uh, preview. Uh, you know, you can, um, legally you can listen to or preview a song. Uh, up to 30 seconds, uh, in some uh, cases, uh, uh, one minute and 30 seconds, and that's exactly what we have here. Yep. Nice. Final question. There is um, no such thing as final question. That's a good point. Uh, how many stations subscribe to Spinatron? Uh, right now, um, well, it's uh, subscribe. Uh, you mean, um, that I, invoice, that I invoice, that I invoice stations. It's uh, 264 right now. Uh, and a bunch of uh, stations actually uh, are trying it out. Now, in trial. In, in trial um, unfortunately, it's going to be an extended trial because there are no DJs right now for, for new stations that I set up uh, earlier um, to actually try out. So it's... Uh, let's say another 20 stations are, are in a, they showed interest they don't have the djs uh, right now because they have the locked door and uh um on that account um 93 stations are using uh, audio recognition at all times so that's quite a high percentage in my view yeah. um, that concludes us Excellent. Oh, um, and uh, our contact information is uh, on our website under about and contact. Please don't hesitate to give us a call or I'm email. Awesome. It's, uh, uh, we're always happy to uh, chat or, or, or uh, find answers uh, for you. Uh, so yeah, part of what we do is, um, is provide uh, human um, service for technical or any other support questions you have. Yeah. So it's a direct number there. Um, please feel free to call me anytime. I'm always happy to answer questions. Tom and Ava, I want to say thank you on behalf of everyone. This has been a really interesting conversation. I've seen from a lot of the chat, everybody is very, very happy with this conversation and That's learned cool. a lot. So really appreciate you making this much time. Hey, it happened. We, we all made it happen together. So thank yeah. you both so much. Thanks again, well. Ernesto, for organizing, and thanks for everyone who uh, uh, who uh, listened to us. And, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for people. Thanks to all of our users. Uh, anybody that uses Spinatron, thank you. Um, and to everybody that doesn't, you You're should. You're welcome. Uh, oh, we, we offer we a free trial. We offer up. a free trial and, uh, and all that no stuff. obligation. And we'll look after you. Yes. Give it a try. And remember, this will be archived. Uh, we'll, you'll be getting a copy of this very, very soon. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. Tom, Ava, thank you so, so much, too. Again. Thank you. Okay, take care. Take care, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.